Yeah. Well, yeah, I haven't even gotten the dungeon item yet, so... Yeah, I feel like at this point the dungeons get slightly more complex in a way, more meaty. Yeah, they do. I, I could definitely tell, like, Snow... Uh, the next dungeon... <laughs> I'd rather not spoil it, I almost did. But, uh, yeah, the next dungeon after this one, this one... That one's kind of a beef, beef, beef. Kind of. Yeah, there's a lot to that one. Next couple dungeons are actually kind of beefy dungeons. Oh, yeah. Especially the last one. Last one's really old. Alright, so let's keep on going through here. There's a little indention on the floor, but we can't do anything about that. We need to have a certain item before we get into that. So, here we can see that. And we can see that a bubble went through the floor. Good enemy. Yeah, really. Now I'm gonna just jump down here. And this, like, corkscrew design here will, uh,. It's kind of like your elevator of sorts. For this. Oh, come on. Come on, Link. <laughs> come on, Link. Don't fall on the floor. Alright, so we're gonna actually go upwards because there's a couple treasure chests that um, are in these rooms here. I can actually get to a certain room right there that did that one. I always remember because there was like a couple of treasure chests. Yeah, there's one right there. But we can't do anything because, you know, spikes be blocking. You had to bait you with this you one. To to bait you with that one. You had to go through this one. I think there's bugs coming around. No. I thought maybe I'm thinking of something else. Uh, I thought it was just a bubble. Well, you already killed it, so we're good. Inside the small key, we have to grab this one. See, this one I'm talking about. Like, that one's on a blue chest. And the other one. There was another one that was just in one of those tiny little chests. I'm like, that's kind of inconsistent. Yeah, just a bit. Okay, I want to go up. I want to try to keep going up so that way I can see what other items there are. They they be. Yeah, a lot of these kind of lead to was... nothing since there's just a lot of pots here, or just an empty way in general. And then obviously some, as you've seen here, do have treasure. Yeah. I just want to make sure. More spikes. We go this way. And I think there's just... We haven't found uh, our friend Uku yet, either. Yeah, I remember Uku in this dungeon is like in a weird spot. It's like halfway through the place for some reason. It's like at that point, well, what's the point? Usually yeah. Uku's there right at the beginning of the I don't really like Uku much in this one. Like, the, the warp system they use for the dungeons is not the best, since sometimes you get it too late, and sometimes it's so well hidden you don't get it at all. So for a first-time player, that's such a useful thing. They got to stop playing the game, and it's such a well-hidden warp system in general. I don't know why they bothered, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. It, it's like a worse version of Four's Win from Ocarina, because at least that was an item, so you carry it with you at all times. Uku is a temporary item, which is not nearly as useful. No. Like, I like Uku, <laughs> but it's just like, eh, I, do I need to use Uku? You know? I like, half the time, whenever I do dungeons anymore, do them all in one go. So yeah. it's just like, it's not really that bad. Like, I think the only dungeon I actually really needed to use, like Uku, was the last one. And yeah, I can understand that with how big it is. And even then, it's like Uku's warp system is weird because you have to use it to warp in one room and then warp you right outside the dungeon. And if you go back into the dungeon entrance, Uku will then go back into your pocket. So your warp is destroyed. So not the best. You can't use it as shortcuts like you could with other warps in different Zelda games. Yeah. I just never really found much use for Uku unless I actually needed to turn the game off. Because it's just... It was kind of a waste in a lot of situations. Yeah. I think Ugu is coming up pretty soon, though. Yeah. I can't remember anymore. That's it, it, It's, like, near the room where you get the item in this dungeon. So it comes up in a very weird spot, like I mentioned earlier. Okay. This this room, I remember. I think, actually, Ugu's in... Uh, I think it's, like, uh, going Yeah, there's going to be spikes yeah. coming, you know? Yeah, we got some here. So you just gotta kind of find an alternate path around. Around it. So. 
Just gotta find the areas that have spikes come up here. Uh, this is actually kind of one of those those mo moments where Wolf Link could come in handy. But there's also yeah. like Ghoul Rat. So I just remember this this dungeon creeping me out as a kid when I was younger. I mean, I was 16 when this game came out, so. Okay, I can't go that way. The, the ghosts is what throw me off I because don't know, this you would just. You'd be using your senses and then. You won't really see anything right away, and then you'll just see a ghost creep up on you. Because of the, how the rats work in this, it just. Yeah. It, it feels uncomfortable at first. Yeah. I didn't mean to talk to you. No. So oh, sorry. Alright, um. Yeah, there's a. Uh, over here. I'm not sure. I have to go this way. Midnight, I don't mean to talk to him and to push at not L. There's Red Re Dead Knight. You can also just, you know, come up and bite its neck. Yeah, I mean, this is another just, safe you know, way to attack Red Dead's, too. Because you move so fast as a wolf, you don't really give the Red Dead much of a chance to stun you. Freaking ghoul knight, ghoul, uh, rats. Damn, dirty rats. Alright. Um. Oh, there's another one. Shoot. Oh, there's a lot of them down here. Yeah, they put a lot Holy of rats crap. in this room. Because they want you to sink in that quicksand. There's a timing puzzle here, right. too. So, so that's right another reason why they're here. here. Just to slow you down. Yeah. So this right here, we have to pull this. It's kind of like how we were in Goron Mines. We have to have to hold this uh, wall here. And we have to race over to the door before it uh it closes on us. So you kind of have to move quick. I'm not doing a very good job of that. But you just gotta come over here and move quick before it closes. Yeah, this is where the wolf so, form comes in handy. Just keep that in mind. Yeah, wolf form comes in handy big time here. Now I'm just gonna hit kill all these here. I think there's that's it. We just kind of go up this way now. Yeah, I believe Careful. Uku's coming up here very spinning... soon. Yeah. Eh. Okay. Oh, there's more, uh, more bugs. You just gotta be careful here with uh, the bugs because they'll make you sink faster in the sand. I do believe when you use it's your just... lantern, that does scare away the bugs, so they won't really attach to you at that point. Maybe it's a. Uh... Yeah, I think I'll try that. that uh... Yeah, because these oh, guys did, constantly did I come on you. Yeah, bugs don't like you. Don't like the lantern. Yeah, they don't like the the light from it. Yeah, there's a dude right there. Yeah, this is such a weird spot to put this thing. I, I don't know why they put put the warp item this deep into the dungeon. <laughs> That's one of those signs where Uku's not nearly as useful as she could be. Yeah. Phew! Free at last. Gracious, you've been a nice fellow who helped me out the other day. Nice again. Well, now that we found each other again, let's stick together for a bit. Hmm? I'll be right with you. If you want to whoop out, just let me know. Okay, you go. <laughs> this is kind of a little bit late to be calling, yeah, helping us, but eh. Yeah, just I guess a bit. better late than never, right? A little better late than never, I guess. All right, so we're in this room, and there's spinning spike trap. And I just walked right into it. Like a dummy. Move. <laughs> okay, kill the bugs first. Get the bugs off me. Alright, so... You can also just use a... Uh, if you're quick enough, you can roll under the traps. I do remember that. Yeah, because yeah, you you, you you're just, small you enough and you roll to go right underneath it. Yeah. So you can you can go roll right underneath these death traps. So... <laughs> Um, okay, we gotta go this way and roll under there. We go in this room. Again, more Stalfos. So we're just gonna go ahead and just uh, blow him up as soon as he spawns. And he just yeah. dies instantly. Now that we know the weakness, <laughs> this is super easy. Yeah, Stalfos just are not really hard in this game. I'm gonna be pretty honest. Yeah. They, they were really hard when I first played this, but I didn't know about the bomb arrow trick. So, I mean, yeah, bomb arrows are. Pretty, pretty OP in this game. I, I think it took me, like, no time at all to figure that out when I first played, because I did play Link to the Past before this, so I already knew. Alright, Stalfos probably want to use Bombs with. 
So when I see him crumble, it's like, all right, I gotta blow him up. But what happens if I shoot him with a bomb arrow? So the next time I saw one of them, I just shot him with a bomb arrow. He died instantly. Oh. Oh. I didn't know what to do now. I'll just use bomb arrows from now on. <laughs> just save me a whole bunch of time. Now, if I remember correctly, there are bugs that come up on this split part here. Yeah, if you want to get through here a little easier, using a lantern also helps. And they put these claw shot targets here for you as well, just a oh, claw shot around the room. It's been attacking lock me. Jump across here where the Stolfos was. And we'll be on our way up to this room. Now, if I remember, this is the room where our mini, mini boss is. And if I remember correctly, this is like the only time we've ever sold, ever seen this enemy game. Yeah, this is the only time you see this. And this boss is pretty interesting, just because of it being yeah, a, really a like one-time thing. As you can see, there's a giant sword that's attached with, uh, from the looks of it, like rope with, uh, that, I mean... Prayer slips, you know, the ancient Japan prayer slips on. Let's go ahead and cut it down. Yeah, who tied down Cloud's Buster Sword? Yeah. Who really tied down Cloud's Buster Sword? Evil Sword. Going to attack you, but who is wielding this evil sword? There's obviously somebody who's got to be wielding it. Well, let's turn into a wolf to find out. And turn on our senses. Sure enough, there was a there's a ghost that is wielding the sword. As soon as you wa uh, dodge his attack and he turns purple, that's when you can attack him. As soon as you attack him, he reveals his true form into this disgusting monster ghoul. And then, as soon as he starts doing that, he's gonna fly around this room. You can attack him with an arrow. I'm using bomb arrows. Yeah, so I mean overkill, but that also works. Yeah. As soon as you attack him with regular arrow, I'm gonna go ahead and switch saw back to regular arrows. Yeah, I'm save your bombs. It's not worth yeah. it. Now this guy, honestly, he has a very goofy name because this guy is literally just called Death Sword. Death I mean, Sword. Yeah, took yeah, it, it, it took it literal at that point because he does have a sword that's very deadly. I'll just call him Death Sword. Good enough. Call him Death Sword. Now, right, actually, so it's something interesting away. about this boss in particular is that uh, Speamers recently found out you can skip this boss fight. And what they do now is they just use, like, the wolf form, get, like, a charge jump attack, and just jump over the barrier. Because this is the only mini boss, I believe, where the item is just sitting over there next to the other side of the room. You're really just killing this boss to open the gate to get to it. So if you can get over the gate, you can get to the item without even killing this guy. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, other Zelda games do this every once in a while too. Wind Waker's mirror shield is another good example. Oh of yeah, that, the mirror shield sitting up there on the top of the cliff. That is weird. But yeah, we took out a uh, death death sword, and uh, because of that, now we got a, new, a door that uh, opened up to us—the one that Lester just mentioned. So let's go ahead and claim our prize. We got the spinner, an ancient machine that lets you to float in the air. Set it to Y, X, or R, get on top of it, and move along our sand and or on walls. Press the assign button while riding to attack enemies with spin power. We're playing Beyblades, everybody. Basically. I love and hate this item the exact same time, because I love the concept of this, and it's a really fun item to use. It is so underutilized in this game. After you yeah. do everything here in Arbiter's Grounds, this thing barely gets used again. You get to jump off. And we just spin around play, uh, playing Beyblades and whatnot. I love I love the spinner so much. And, you know, even in, like, Hyrule Warriors, they use the spinners in a, as a, one of Link's weapons in Hyrule Warriors. And I yeah, love it. I remember the Wii U version. If you scanned in a Link Amiibo, you would automatically unlock that. And it's a cool weapon. Yeah. It's and I only changed that for the other ports of the game, because, like, you scan in the same figure on the Switch version, and it just gives you, like, a Hylian sword or something. Yeah. Alright, well, um, I'm gonna be right back, guys. Give me just a second. I have to readjust.
All right, everybody, we're back. I'm sorry about that. I had to take care of some tech issues real quick. Uh, but yeah, we just got the spinner, which is a cool little, uh, handy little device. I really do like this this item. Uh, you can grind rails with it. So any rails you see, you can just, you know, jump right onto them. And then you just ride them, like, you know, to, like you're grinding on a skateboard or something like that. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. Uh, I just really like how they use this item. It's just, like Lester said, it's really underappreciated. It's really underutilized and not used very much in this game. Yeah, unfortunately. I remember I liked this item a lot when I first played. And uh, at the time I played this, I had a modded Wii. So I decided, you know what, let's load up some cheat codes to this game. And I'm going to give the spinner some cheat codes because people make codes that you can go ahead and use the spinner to basically fly, for one, which was pretty interesting. <laughs> but some of my favorites were just to uh, bump the sp uh, spinner's base speed up so you'd actually use that thing when out growing uh, going like one mile an hour which was actually really cool and I wish that you actually got to do that more in the game itself natively because when I applied that yeah. cheat and did that it's like this is a lot of fun you just breeze through enemies and this is a good way to travel it would have been a good thing to have but sadly this thing is not the best as you can see from just Matt using it this thing is not that fast at all so for trans uh, transport around yeah. Hyrule, this is not the best thing to use, and it's not the best in terms of attacking things, but it's still a good option. Okay, so I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to... I, I always have trouble to jump off here so that way I can go up this way. That's exactly what I was trying to do. Yeah, you have <laughs> to jump kind of kind of annoying. Like, yeah. So we're going to go in this room. This room has a lot of spinner, like, goodies in it. So, you kind of have to kind of jump in between walls here to kind of connect your stuff, or your spinner jumps a little bit. And you have to ride along these rails here and then jump off at the right angles. <laughs> it's just really freaking annoying sometimes. But I really do like this item. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to grab this treasure chest here. There's another one right across from me. This one has bombs, which we need after using a couple bomb arrows. Yeah, so, this is a dungeon um, you use a lot of bombs track? with, so it's always nice to get a restock. 20 rupees! Like I, uh, like I mentioned a couple episodes ago, I really do like that, that this version of Twilight Princess actually makes it so that you keep the freaking rupees and they don't put them back in the chest like the Wii and GameCube version did. Yeah. Oh dang it, I didn't mean to do that. It, it's like a plus and a minus to me, because on one hand it's really good because it marks it off your map. So you don't get confused of what items you haven't collected anymore because it's just a rupee chest. But yeah. it's also a downgrade in a way only because if you remember about that later and just want to come back for the rupees, because in those versions, if your wallet was full, you just put it back. So you would just go empty your wallet and then collect the rupee then. Unfortunately, now you just kind of waste it if your wallet's full. Eh. I, I never really found rupees to be too much of an issue in this game, yeah. especially since uh, Agatha is a thing. So, yeah, I, I agree there. There's, there's not many issues where you run out of rupees, and when you do, as long as you're collecting the bugs around Hyrule, then you're never going to have to worry about money. Agatha's just the Hyrule bank at that point. Yeah. She gives you a lot, and plus, uh, not only that, they give you... That's how you get your wallet upgrades. Yeah. So, just doing at least uh, one of the bug trading things is enough for you to get like a thousand rupees at that point. Like you can just hold a thousand rupees with the first wallet, I believe. Okay, so there we go. Okay. And then jump in here and there we go. And we got a Stalfos. So I'm going to go ahead and use our bomb arrow trick uh, ZL here and then just Shoot him with a bomb arrow. <laughs> Did it too close to me at that time, but then I blew myself up. And it's but... fine. Now, the first okay. thing I thought because of how many uh, times I, I watched people play Randomizer for like Ocarina, and I hear ZL, I was like, well, you gotta play the song for him first? <laughs> You're just gonna play Zelda's Lullaby? That's not gonna work. <laughs> and inside this treasure chest is our second piece of heart. So, we have collected all the pieces of heart in Arbiter's Grounds, so. Yeah, two more, then you have another heart container. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna barely miss that. Yeah, this Jump is a real close here. call. Yeah. Too close, too close for me. 
and go the wrong way. I want to go the other way. Yeah, this one's oh. interesting because you can get Had stuck it. in a permanent loop by just going around the wrong way if you're not careful. Yeah. Try and avoid the head. And now, see, this is yeah, what I like with the spinner. You're doing a lot of cool things with like, grinding off the walls, but you get some crazy speed with it, too. Yeah, yeah, especially, yeah, you're going really fast whenever you're you're going on those rails, but, like, whenever you're not on the rails, you go, like, at snail's pace. Yeah, that's why it's really hard to justify using the spinner in a lot of other areas, unless there's rails. And inside this treasure chest is our Hylian letter D. Oh, good. Link got the D. I don't think he wanted this. He got the D. Yes, I was going to make that joke. You beat me to it. <laughs> Link got the D. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, but, yeah, that's our second or Beaver stamp in this dungeon, so we're done with that, too. Uh, you believe ah! Yeah, this is a tricky platforming section because of the spikes on both sides. You have to really time this one well. Yeah. I gotta go back down. There's actually a treasure chest I missed down there. I always miss this one. Yeah, I always think that one is one. just rupees at this point, because you, you got all the other major collectibles, and there's no keys here. Yeah, it's right here. Yeah, this always one's very easy to forget about. One. I always forget about, too, because it's just kind of out of the way, you want to be honest. I don't know, it's just rupees, but eh. I want to grab it because I want to be able to say, hey, I got all the treasure chests in the dungeon. Oh. Alright, so we gotta do all this again, but that's okay. Just go up the ramp, and just... Do gnarly tricks and whatnot. It's so 90s, kit guys. <laughs> this is so 90s. Hey, it's still a better way to play skateboarding in Tony, Hawk, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5. Yeah, that's true. Sadly. Unfortunately. That's what I... happens when you forget about an IP for 10 years and you rush it out before your license expires. You get Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5. Oh gosh, I'm going too fast. Okay, come on, no leak. Go the other way. Come on. Go. There we go. Okay. Got myself readjusted again. Oh, Lordy. I hate whenever I get to that circle. I'm like, oh, yeah. Lord, I'm stuck in an endless loop here. Alright, so I'm going to keep on riding up here. We're going to jump off here. Get, oh, here. Like, get off that. There we go. Alright, so we're going to go on this ramp here and avoid the death spinners. And once we do that, we're at the top of the level. There we go. Now, you guys probably saw this treasure chest earlier when we were in this room before. We couldn't get it. it. We literally couldn't get it beforehand. But we just appeared on the other side, and now we can finally get this treasure chest. Inside is the big key. The key that we need to get to the boss door. So... I love watching speedruns of Arbiter's Grounds in particular, because they always get this item before the spinner. Because they go this direction first with some glitches. Yeah. So Alright, so... Like a weird order. Um, this is the first instance of this puzzle here. If you see this little indention in the floor like this, this is where you're gonna be... A uh, spinner puzzle is being used. We jump on our spinner here, and we can start spinning the gears underneath this indention. And that causes, uh... Like rooms to open up like this. Oh, that and a lot of online players would be pissed at you because you keep on teabagging them in the game. <laughs> I was gonna. Uh, uh, yeah, I can see what you're talking about with that. Oh, lordy. Especially, uh, like, Splatoon 2 and Smash Brothers. Smash Brothers, especially. I, yeah, Gosh. that one got a lot worse since they took away people's taunts online. And they're like, oh, I guess yeah. I'll just teabag instead. And now, that actually makes things worse. I don't have taunts. Right. Jump up here. Oh. And we're gonna jump off here and get onto this spinner to raise this platform up. I think we're getting pretty close to the boss door. Yeah, this is actually the final stretch to it, because once you raise the platform here using Link's signature teabag move, then you'll be at the boss door. <laughs> the teabag. Alright, so now we can go up here and go up a way up and around. Here, and that'll lead us straight. Oh gosh, almost fell off again. Oh, man, lead us that would have been good. No, that wouldn't have been good. Would have been a long climb got, back up. If we got straight to the boss door here. Uh, there is a fairy in one of these things here. If you need a fairy, I don't really need one because I got two in a ball already. Yeah, and you're pretty much so, at full health, so you don't need that either. All right, before we go any further, let's see if we got all the treasure chests. I'm pretty sure we did. Yeah, it looks like you got everything else cleared out. Yeah. 
pretty sure I got all the treasure chests. Yeah, yeah and since you're playing them. the HD version, you can also check you got all the pose, but this is a dungeon you don't have to worry about missing them since the only ones you got to collect are the mandatory pose. Yeah, so we got all the treasure chests. We got all the pose. We got all the pieces of heart and reverse stamps. Let's go ahead and finish up Barbara's Grounds here. Now, like I mentioned earlier in this episode, yeah, when we recorded Lester's LP of this and we got to this part, uh, yeah, we had some weird audio issues with this. Yeah, I mean, stuff like this taught me over the years that I'm going to need a capture card with some like built-in encoder or something because I want to prevent this from happening again. And as soon as we come up here, you notice a giant old fossil, like, like a giant like demon fossil and if we get close to it hello Zant nice to see you here you still live how astonishing no wonder they call you a hero but this is a truly bitter street reunion truly for I fear this is the last time I'll see you alive Infused magic sword and put it in the skull of this fossil. This is the only time you ever see him do this, too, where he actually comes into the dungeon and interferes with your progress by actually making the boss fight. <laughs> All the other yeah, times he just has on. it set up for you before you even get there. This time it's like, oh crap, Link's here. Hang on. Gotta make the boss real fast. Don't mind me. <laughs> Don't mind me, let me make my bot my minion. I'm just stabbing a skull. It's no big deal. <laughs> this is Twilight Fossil Star Lord. Funny fact about this boss. This boss is actually the final boss of Link's Cross. Yeah, which is actually really weird to think about. So for this boss fight, avoiding the freaking death circles, your main goal here is to spin off and go towards Stalord's vertebra. You want to kind of like jump off at a right angle as soon as he's not blocking you with his hand. Come over here and try to jump off to go right into his, his vertebra. You're gonna crack right through it, cause it to cause him to lose some bones. <laughs> and as you can see, when just Matt's trying to jump down there to actually attack the boss. More enemies spawn around him. These guys are really just here as an obstacle. So the more damage you do to this guy, the more enemies he'll spawn around him as a shield. Later in this yeah. fight, you're actually going to have to use these guys to bounce around a lot just to get to Infertibray. Yeah, unfortunately, that's just going to be the thing. We're going to give Stalard some back problems. <laughs> but back problems are me like scoliosis because he's not gonna have a back oh, at this rate Lord. i just I, I, I like jumped off and i missed a missed my cue on the yeah because i the think attack. you used your attack a little too early so it wasn't ready to be used yeah. yet there we go because this attack on the spinner does have a cooldown you can't just spam it constantly it activates like every second if you mash a button so it's not spammable avoid the gotta avoid the death circles death barrels or whatever you want to call it. The spinner <laughs> traps. I was gonna say, I don't see much of a barrel with that thing, so maybe not that. Ah, dang it. <laughs> yeah, at this point, chance. he actually spawns like six different goons in front of his weak point there, so this is the point where you're probably just wanting to destroy everything around him and bounce off the enemies to just go into his weak point. It's hard to actually go in, but you can if you get a good enough shot. Really hard yeah, to do. Like Six people protecting his back. Yeah, he really doesn't like, want to get scoliosis. I will not! I will not get osteoporosis! No, we, we just, oh, just want to give him a curved spine. It's fine. You were stuck on his hand for a long time there. I, I don't concerned. know how I managed that. Okay. Oh, gosh. And... <laughs> we are the protectors. We will not let you have give our lord freaking... There we go, come on, there we go. <laughs> I barely just like my way over there. Yeah, you're going at the slowest speed possible. Like, hang on, hang on, I'm almost there. 
It's like a car running out of gas. I'm gonna get to the gas station. <laughs> well, yeah, there we go. We defeated Star Lord. Pretty simple boss. We just kill him, he sinks in his own sand, he just basically buried him alive or dead. That was I I don't know what Zan's all the issue with that that boss was I mean, it wasn't that bad. It was pretty short. I mean, he had a lot of goons. That was the harder yeah. part. Alright, so let's gonna go ahead and activate this uh, center portion here. Yeah, it's where does the heart container yet, though? I mean, doesn't he always drop a heart container? What, what happened? Did I forget one? I mean, they usually don't. Don't they play the music, too? Yeah, what's so, like on the Like the music? That dun dun brr, brr. I think you're, I think your disc is scratched. <laughs> I think so too. I don't know why it's been going. Oh it. shoot! He's not dead yet. Yeah, yeah. they kind of bait you in this fight. Kind of bait you with this one. I and love the first-person <laughs> angle when he's about ready to knock you off too. That's just horrifying. I love this boss. This part of the boss fight though. We're gonna we're like grinding on the rails, going up the center co uh, column here, and we're we can just jump in between here. We're going really super fast. <laughs> Yeah. I love this part. Now, if you pay attention to music here, it's another reference once again, Ocarina of Time. This is the boss fight music from that game. I believe this is the boss fight you hear against, like, Didon uh, King Dodongo and Vavagia. Yeah. So, he's going to show up his little head here. He's going to try, try shooting up little fireballs at you. You just jump in between his fireballs, so that way he misses it. But as soon as he comes, ah, dang it. But yeah, like whenever he's like right, like in the same angle as your jumps, that's when you jump right into him. Yeah, but as you've seen, you have to be quick there because on that fifth shot, he does linger a moment and he's closer to you. But if you're not fast enough, he still will shoot you out of the sky. Yeah. Now, honestly, it's best, at least in this portion of the fight, to ride up this wall as much as you can since there's nothing here to stop you. Later, though, there will be spike traps here, so you will actually have to jump back and forth between the walls just to get to where the, the boss is. Yeah. Okay, and... Next jump. There we go. Attacked him. Now, as soon as he does that, you can go up and start attacking him to kind of get a little bit of attacks on him. Now, if you're fast enough with your damage output, I believe you can one-cycle this guy, but it's very difficult. Yeah. Mortal Draw is a good one to do, because you put your sword away, you use that, and it does a lot of damage to this boss. I think yeah. it's like six Mortal Draws could kill this thing, if you're quick enough. Gosh. Never really thought about using Mortal Draw. That's yeah, actually it, Mortal Draw is a really good thing to use against some of these bosses, because as long as you have a chance to get it out, it does a lot of damage. Oh, look, the the spike barrels are back. <laughs> yeah, so you notice after you hit Star-Lord a couple times there, he's going to spawn the spike barrels around, so now you have to be careful of the spikes. Just trying to climb up to him. Once the head's here, though, they disappear, so that's a good thing. Ow. Oops. <laughs> well, I didn't say I was good at this. <laughs> I just, I, I hate the spinning. The jump between spins, I've never been good at, so it's just like... Yeah. <laughs> Jump across here. So more or less, this is a waiting game until he comes and peeks his head around the corner. Pretty much. <laughs> you just have to take your time with it and then pay attention to when he's going to shoot. You want to jump like right before he shoots to give you more time just to climb the wall. Yeah. As you see, you can climb up the center pillar, but then the ones on your left, you can't climb at all because they're just a straight shot forward. So, oh, how did that happen? Wait, how the heck did that happen? Whoa, yeah, you missed it. What the heck? I've never seen that happen before. <laughs> He's still down know. here. Like, yeah, I'm going to give you some video. I'm just going to chill here. <laughs> He's like, hey, hey, hey. He's down on the ground. Let me let me kick him down. Basically what he did. I've never seen you miss like that in this boss fight before. So apparently there is potential to miss the grind rail when you jump back and forth. I don't understand that. That's weird. <laughs> Maybe it's just my luck, you know? <laughs> it's that good old recording curse. Oh, hey, I'm recording the game. Now I'm going to have the worst luck in existence. <laughs> LPR's curse, I tell you. Give me practice this game up really good and be like, hey, I game. 
pretty well. How did I? Come on, I jumped and attacked him. <laughs> yeah, it was just like a little too late because his fireball got out, and I was like, oh, well, it's gonna hurt. But no, it's just like you know, I practiced this this game up pretty good. I you know I, I feel like pretty pretty confident on on my skills in this. As soon as I hit the record button, I play like a five year old. So <laughs> that's just how it is. Yeah, you practice so well on your off time, and then when you record, it's like this is the first playthrough. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, Star Lord, let's try this again. Across here, jump here, jump here. Wait, what? Did I push A? Seriously? I pushed A mid jump of that attack. Wow. Are you freaking <laughs> kidding me? Well, my thumb got too too anxious <laughs> because of my butt. I have it set on the X button. On the, uh, yeah, on the X button. <laughs> my thumb can push both X and A at the same time. Yeah, so. you rocked it a yeah. little too much there. I usually have the spinner on R just to avoid that. Because it's kind of like how the Wii version was back in the day, because you had to use B for all your items, which was nowhere near the A button on that controller. <laughs> he's like, oh, oh, shoot, he's back up there. And he ran around. <laughs> no, it's actually funny to think of as like he peeked around the corner, like, hey, what happened? Oh, he's fine. All right, I'm mine. Oh, he's back on the wall. Yeah. I swear this boss has never given me this much trouble before. Alright, come on. Peek your head around the corner, you little skull head. Yeah, so as soon as you see him start charging the fire like that, you want to immediately jump because he's about ready to shoot. Yeah, especially helpful to do that for the fifth hit, which will actually stun the guy. Right. And then, will this will be it? I'm going to go one more cycle this. Nope. Yeah, probably one more cycle. Ah! Yeah, one more cycle this. Alright, so, now, he, he, take a, he does take a lot of hits, but I guess he is kind of made out of bone, so. Yeah. You think he's like, yeah, hey, he's not gonna take as much hit as you think you And now have. you have to be careful when you're on the last set of hits here, because as you can see, he spawns spikes on both sides of the walls now. So you can't yeah. just hug on the left side forever and wait, because that will also hurt. And jump. And jump. And jump. There we go. Alright. Let's go finish him off. There we go. Link it up there so fast. I don't know. He just like he, right, just... he does his own exploding thing. I'm just gonna ride the center pillar up. Well, while the boss is death animation, I'm just gonna you know use my spinner to get up here real quick. <laughs> Speedrun stats. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, really. And you get lucky that the heart drops up here too. Yeah. He something that it's spawn where his head died, which is down below, because then he had to go all the way down there just to get one heart container. Yeah. All right, let's Link. Let's go. We're close to the mirror twilight. Well, before that, let's go grab our heart container. So with that, we have now another heart. But, I think this will be kind of a good stopping point for this episode. We've yeah. cleared out Arbiter's Grounds. Uh, we got all the, we got our new item with the spinner. We defeated Star Lord, And now, we'll be heading over to the Mirror Twilight. And find out how we can use that to get back to, get to the Palace of Twilight. So, Thank you, Lester, for joining me on this episode. Yeah, thanks for having me along. It was a fun time. Yeah, it was a fun time. <laughs> I'm glad you got. I'm glad I got to repay the debt that I owed you with this. With this now to finish this up, unplug the computer, and then your audio can just delete itself. <laughs> Happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> and that is why I record with a desktop now. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, everybody, we'll see you guys in the next episode. See you guys later.